Here are five secrets to becoming an irresistible sought after photographer. Hello, sunshine, and welcome back to the Gold Biz Podcast with me, your host, Rachel Traxler. Today, I have with me a guest, KT Mary. She's a globally recognized fine art wedding photographer. She's based in Miami, Florida, and she has a very distinctive editorial style that has made her become one of the most sought after photographers in the industry. She has a really unique approach and thought process behind what has been able to set her apart and how she's been able to grow her business set apart from any other other photographer out there. So we're going to be talking about the five irresistible secrets to becoming that photographer. And I'm really excited to break this down in this episode with you. But before we get started, make sure if you haven't already to leave a review on the Gold Biz Podcast so that I can see what you love most about it. And then also you'll be entered into this month's giveaway for the podcast. You can enter in every single month. All you have to do is leave a review to be entered into the drawing. But without further ado, let's get into it because this is a really good one. And I just love KT and her mindset and where she's going with this. So let's dive into it. All right, KT, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this topic too, just because I feel like there's so many things, but I love hearing what other people think too are some secrets and some ways to craft your business to become that go-to photographer, or just like an irresistible photographer. So we're going to just dive right in. We're going to talk right. about five secrets to becoming an irresistible photographer. Can you just give us a quick rundown of what those five things are, and then we'll circle back and dive into each one of those deep, more deeply. Yeah, of course. So in in my experience, over 20 years in the industry, working with thousands of different photographers and creative entrepreneurs, high level, obviously there's a hundred things or probably thousands, but high level, these are the things that really stand out to me as if you could just focus on five things, just focus on five things that they would make a big difference for you. And so I'm going to give you the super quick rundown and then we will circle back. Number one, this is always going to be the thing that is going to be at the forefront is getting clear on your version of success, knowing where you're headed. You're going to, you'll miss fuzzy targets each and every time. So that is the, the very first one. Number two is having a perspective. I can't tell you, and I'm sure you guys have all seen it out in the big bad world where everything just starts to look the same. You're like, it's pretty, but it's a little bit like a subdivision. One house doesn't really stand out from the rest. And this is where we need to really have you have a perspective. And you've got one, just sometimes it's getting washed over with all the noise out there. And the next one, which made a really big difference in my business was actually becoming the CEO, really focusing on the business and not just identifying as an artist. Being an artist is the most amazing thing ever. But also being a creative entrepreneur, being a CEO is pretty damn spectacular too. And the next one is to make sure that you are letting go of the money beliefs that don't serve you anymore. When we say we want to grow our business, what are we saying? We're saying we want to grow money. We want to earn more money. We want to generate more money. And ultimately, we need to really know what our money beliefs are, what our money story is, and if it's helping us or hurting us. And and last but not least is we really need to grow ourselves. Your brand is you and you're the foundation of it. So whether it's limiting beliefs, whether it's your health, whether it's just that you're worn out, burnout, creatively strung out, you name it, you really need to focus on your holistic growth and development as a human being, not just your business. And so high level, that's the three, but we can dive in wherever you'd like to start. Ooh, I'm excited. These are going to be some good ones too, just because it's fun to hear whatever. I feel like if you are to ask anyone, like everyone, basically, everyone would have a little bit different takes on things. So I'm excited to hear what you think more deeply. So let's just circle back. Let's just start with number one and let's just dive deeper into it. Okay. So first and foremost, this is where we start in, in any of my programs. This is where I start every single time of the year where I'm going, okay, great. What do I want out of the next year? What do I want out of the next month? What do I want out of the next five years? I read this line the other day and it was, you want to think about your vision. You want to think about what you're going to be doing with what would make both the eight-year-old version of you and the 80-year-old version of you proud. 
And so when you think about your vision, you really need to sit down a give it space, but really start to chart out. If I could map out what would be ideal for me, what is that? And I swear people spend more time thinking about what they're going to order from Uber Eats or what they're going to do this weekend than they do thinking about this topic. And this is like the matter of our lives. And so knowing exactly what your version of success is so important. And what I see a lot of is, especially now with luxury conferences out there and social media just showing us just glamour on top of glamour is more and more people are really viewing that luxury is the end all and be all just because it feels like the top of the ladder. But is that specifically what is right for you? Is that specifically what you desire? And luxury, obviously, there's nuances to it. It's not just one way, one destination. So what does that really look like to you? And more specifically, why do you want that? So are you admiring something that you go, wow, that really seems amazing? Or are you truly desiring it for yourself? And there's a difference. So there's a lot of things out there. And I've had to get really crystal clear on that in my journey about, am I truly just admiring the work that someone's creating? Is that work really something that feels authentic to me that's coming from a deep place of my creation? Or am I just going, wow, I really admire that, but I can just admire it from afar. I don't have to go and try to replicate it if it's not my style or it's not my perspective. So knowing the distinction between admiring versus desiring really what's right for you. And then it really helps us when we start to set out and strategize our year where we're going to spend our time, energy, and money. If you could keep going through that filter of your version of success, is this getting me closer to it or further away? Is this a distraction or is this something that's actually a stepping stone? And we need those, especially now one scroll on Instagram and you can really start to get off track. So I think we really, first and foremost, if you, Just stop the podcast here, go and spend time on this one and really get crystal clear on that with your firm definition of why behind it. Oh my goodness. I could not agree with that more. It's just, especially it comes down to every single, even just post that you post on social media, a piece of content you create. Is it actually bringing you closer to your goal? Because it's so easy. Exactly what you said, Katie, like in today's day and age, like you see something and we get distracted by the shiny objects being like, oh, so and so is doing this. Maybe I should be doing that, or I should. But like, our goals are so different, long term, short term. Like, th- is that piece of content getting them closer to their goal? Or if you create something like that, is it getting closer to your goal? Your goal might be something completely different. It's just such a good reminder to think of: is that we are all on our own trajectory and like all our own goals, plans, whether that's like short term, long term, like you were saying. And it's, we have to stay laser focused because it's so easy to like, we got to put our blinders up and stay focused on like setting goals for ourselves. Absolutely. And, and we all are influenced by the world around us, inspired by the world around us, which is a great thing. But we do have to really check in of, okay, was I just caught up in Taylor Swift land when I went and dressed in glitter and got all the friendship bracelets? Or is that really me and I want to carry that on all the time, whatever that may be? It's very easy to get swept up in, but is that something you're like, no, this is actually authentically me? Yes. Oh my goodness. A hundred percent. That's a good, I love that analogy, like tying it into like our business and stuff. Cause it's exactly it too. It's yeah. it directly applies to it. And that's awesome. Is there any like piece of advice that you would give to someone wanting to do that a little bit more? So I always think if feeling, if looking three, five years out feels just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, this is where we start with. I like to dream big. So number one mistake that I see our students inside of our programs make is they're going through the filter of their second grade teacher, their high school counselor comes in and says, is that realistic? Is that really practical? How are you going to do that? Leave all that aside. Just paint a picture. Just paint a picture. You don't have to. Nobody's going to go, oh, yeah, but you said you wanted this. Nobody's going to really ask you those questions. So just paint a picture and just dream and just see what comes up for you without letting the how, the oh yeah, but, and all those things come up. Just really see what comes up for you and start there. Yeah. And I feel like that's going to be a better way to just stay rooted in your own meaning and your own why and really dive deep into your, stay rooted into your own mission and your own brand values and all that. 
Absolutely. And the minute the should start coming up or, oh yeah, I'm a mom or let my husband this, leave that out of it for now. This is where all of a sudden we never even just let the true voice of our intuition and our desires speak through. We really need to give it some space. And so just start there, really just see what comes up, let it get used to just letting that come up and letting it have freedom to just show you what's coming up and and see where it takes you. I love that. And I think that's such a good reminder because I, my husband and I even had a conversation this week and he's, Rachel, you're not hearing me out. There's other ways to go about this because we do get so set in our brains, like you were saying, thinking, just like allowing yourself freedom, exactly Mm -hmm. what you said. I love that because that's when like we're creative entrepreneurs and sometimes the business, like that mindset gets the best of us that let's just have room for, to be creative, see what freedom like comes in that there's Mm -hmm. more than more than one way to get there. And so I love that. Just allowing yourself that, that freedom to dream and see where it takes you. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. Let's dive into number two. All right. So next, like I said, back to that subdivision, everything looking like more of the same, you really need to have a perspective. Have a voice. If you look at any of the people that even pop culture, let's stick on that analogy train for a minute, but you look at the Taylor Swifts, you look at the Lady Gagas, the Miley Cyruses, the Beyonce's, they're not just trying to be one another. They each have their own unique voice, their own unique style, and that's what draws us to them. So same thing. You have a voice, you have a perspective, but so often, this is what I call like the teenage stage of our business when we're in that realm of we're just trying to fit in and just prove that we deserve to be here. But then we never really take off that like awkwardness of that teenage phase and go, okay, now I'm my own person and I've matured into having my own voice and my own perspective. And what is that? And so sometimes we need to step back and go, okay, it's time to not model anymore. It's time for me to really step into being my own person and really leaning into those strengths of your perspective. And often the things that you're worried are going to push people away are actually going to be your secret sauce that's going to draw people in. Yeah. And I love the pop culture analogy too, because as you were naming those people, like different image, like brand image images were coming to my mind. Mm -hmm. And then the first thing I thought of was what's really cool is there's room for them all. Like we love them all. And that's what's so cool about, I think people are scared and held back to branch out and become their own because A, they might not know how. B, mm-hmm. like you said, you said it earlier, we're influenced by the, in, inspired by the people around us and what we're seeing. And so unintentionally, sometimes we're more drawn to that. And these industry buzzwords and things start trends. We cling to those because we're influenced by them. We like them. But like you said, Like it's like that teenager stage. I love that because once you branch out of that's truly when you become like your own brand in that way. And that can be, that takes a while sometimes for people. And, but yeah, like I, I was, like I was saying, the first thing that came to my mind was there's room for every, there's room for them all. And I love it. Yeah. And you're going to see similarities across the board. You you look at the the pop stars and they're all wearing sparkly leotards that are bejeweled. There's stuff that you go like crossover and they're certainly going to be in ours as well. You look at the 1920s, all the artists had similar vibes and, and there were, they were definitely influencing each other. That's always going to be part of it, but you still have to every day be going, what's uniquely coming out of me. And that kind of comes back to your vision. Your vision should be different than everybody else's, just the same way your fingerprints are. So just really channeling that voice and kind of coming back to that voice as a point of how would I shoot this? Not just how would so-and-so shoot it? How would you shoot it? And can you see it differently than other people would? Yeah. So that's such a good reminder too. Is there any active like piece of advice exercise that you could give people to be able to do this? to figure this out for themselves. Yeah. And I think it would be number one, I've done this over the years because sometimes it happens without you even really thinking about it, where you just look at the work that you're most proud of. You work at the things that you really, while you were shooting them, you were like, yes, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is so great. When you can come back to that work, what are the things in it that really stand out to you? What are the words that describe it? What are the the things about it where maybe sometimes you have to go through the motions and get like a shot that leads to the shot. And when you get to the shot, what is it about that? And then go, okay, more of that, more of that. The more that you can lean into your kind of when you really tap into the flow, when you really are creating from a place of intuition 
tapping into that and then studying that kind of as a debrief a little bit and going, huh, how that came together. I was having a lot of fun. I was collaborating with other creative people I really enjoy. I had amazing light or amazing fat, whatever it was, and go, I'm just going to do more of that. And you see this once again with the great artists that they develop and get better and better. We should be doing the same. And it shouldn't always be that we're starting from scratch. We should be building on the previous momentum that we just had and learning from it and going, okay, great. This worked with that, but like that one thing was a little awkward and not really me. Let me lean in more to the thing that I really love. Yeah. And that's so good. And even what I'm thinking as you're talking too is like content retreats or something where people, we are going and you're shooting with other photographers. And it's cool. It's so cool to me that there's 15 photographers photographing one couple and everyone's work looks so different. Mm -hmm. And that's the image that came to my head as you were speaking. We all approach it so differently. So like figuring out, like you said, getting like inspired or just figuring out, yes, I really liked this. This worked for me and running with it. That's just, that's so cool. And there's, yeah, there's so many ways in just figuring out what's yours. Yeah, and then absolutely. Being creative with it. Yeah. Absolutely. And then not only figuring that out then, but then also communicating it in your branding and your messaging and like in your marketing and like speaking to that and like letting your work and work speak for itself too. I feel like that goes hand in hand with this point number two that you were saying have to differentiate yourself as well too. I'm interrupting my own episode to give you a quick glimpse into my signature coaching program created for established photographers wanting to double to quadruple their prices, book their highest package, and bring in inquiries consistently. This is my high-level container of go-to photographers who are making huge waves in the industry. And the biggest difference in this program is that we get a full 12 months together for deep dive transformation, weekly coaching call support, four coaches in the program to deep dive into specific topics and a content retreat all included in one program. And I always say, if you can book one extra wedding from your year in the program together, you're going to see your ROI and it's just the weekly norm wins for my students. So I'm fully confident that you're going to be able to do that and way, way more. And this is an application, phone call and acceptance process only type of program. So if you are curious if this is the right next steps for you to just blow up your business this year, you can fill out the application at racheltrexler.com slash apply or get the link in the show notes. I'll be in touch shortly after you fill it out so that we can talk through together if this is the right fit for you. I'm very honest with people and I want this to be a great fit for everyone involved. That's just my heart behind the way I do this process. And I also think that's why my students just see so much success in this program. So don't just be an information consumption overload this year. I want you to be an action taker and start implementing change into your business. So again, if this feels aligned to you, fill out the application at racheltraxler.com slash apply to apply for my passion to profit coaching program. Yeah, absolutely. If you find that you're plucking your branding from your five colleagues who who are, that's not how we obviously want to do it. We really want to find a way to tap into, once again, your unique vision, your perspective, your voice, and let that shine versus going and just using the same palette, the same voice, the same words, because it does, it turns into that subdivision very quickly. Yeah, uh, for sure. So that's a really good point. Number two. I love it. Let's lead into point number three. Awesome. Awesome. So this one was such a big game changer for me, but I always was first and foremost, an artist. I was not Harvard educated business school, you name it. So I think there's a lot of people out there probably in your listeners that really identify as an artist first, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think holding on to that too tightly and not leaving room for other things, it's not a either or, it's an and. So I think you can really be a thriving, amazing creative, and you can also be a killer business person. And when you look at, once again, sticking with pop culture here, if you look at some of the most successful artists, they've learned that you can't just be a great artist. You also have to be a crazy good business person. That's why somebody like Ariana owns over 50% of her stake in Fenty because she realized that's important and people are really sticking to the business side of things that are the most successful. We as artists need to do the same and you can't, you have to approach it with the same level of knowledge, care, and energetic investment in the sense that 
I think a lot of the times the business stuff, it's all oh, now I have to go do contracts well, or now I have to go do pricing or now I have to go review my P&Ls. It's the same loathing that you would go to a dental appointment. But instead, if we can bring that creative energy of actually this is helping me to achieve everything in my life, that whole vision that I'm dreaming about, this is such an important piece of it. Wow, what a different level of intention when we step into doing the work of our business. And so I learned that the more, A, first I had to fill the knowledge gaps because it's really hard to be confident and excited about going and doing something that you understand so little of. So number one, you really need to fill those knowledge gaps first. That's something that I'm very passionate about helping photographers with inside of our programs. And then number two, once you have those knowledge gaps filled, you might not be Harvard level, whatever, but you can definitely be enough to be proficient and walk circles around people in a room because you have your passion behind it. So then once you have that, then really find ways to make it as fun as your art. And that's really what has happened for me is I found, oh my gosh, you can actually be wildly creative with the business side that you can get your pricing and start to adjust numbers here and see how it affects over here. And all of a sudden project for the next year and go, wow, what if we did this, then this would happen. And it can be really fun and really visionary as well. It doesn't just have to be boring and kind of something for you to loathe. It can absolutely be exciting and creative. Totally. And I feel like I have also grown. I love the business side and the business mm-hmm. aspect. Of it. Simply for what you said to you, you can get creative with it. And I almost like it's like a fun game, especially if you look yeah. back and like analyze your data and stuff. Be like, ooh, this, when we did this happened, or how mm-hmm. can I get to this? I'm right here, but I want to get here. What can I do to fill that gap? Can I get creative? So it's really just, they do go hand in hand, exactly what you said. And it's okay if you're more driven by one than the other. I would say the most common is probably be more creative, especially photographers. We're more creative driven. I really do enjoy, it started for that for me, but I really enjoy the business back end and Mm -hmm. business marketing side of things. I actually really enjoy it. Maybe it's because I took my creativity over to it because you do have to find that met you have to mesh the two and so I love that so just apply take your creativity and apply it to the business side of things and yeah you're gonna have so much more fun with it that way <laughs> yeah and the, the kind of uh, funny thing about all this is I think when we start out at, especially as artists we think oh gosh but if I go focus on the business side I'm gonna lose my creative edge I'm gonna be a sellout all these things come out come up for you. But in actuality, I found that the more buttoned up my business is, the more successful, healthy, and just on point my business is, the more space I have for my creativity, the more confidence I have in my creativity, and the more, I think, secure and able to flourish my creativity is. And so it really is the more you can get your business to really thrive, the more your creativity is going to have room to really grow. Oh, totally. Yes. And I feel like I can attest to that. I feel like the same thing happened to me. And it's, it also is relatable. It's scary to think, oh, if I put too much effort into this, am I going to become not what I started out as? And that's okay too. Like we grow and we evolve and hopefully for the better <laughs> And so with those new boundaries, those new levels of business, it comes new levels of success, new challenges that you navigate through, but for the better <laughs> usually. Absolutely. Let's dive into number four. Yeah, so this one is, it's too good to skip over because I've just seen so many photographers just literally run into their own glass ceiling over and over. And it's just so unbearable to watch. You've got to take a look at your money beliefs. You've got to take a look at your judgments when it comes to this area. So like we we just talked about one judgment what when you were not focusing on your business and just your creativity was that, hey, I might lose my creative edge as I become a better business person. In this area with money, One thing that I see come up a lot is, oh yeah, but I just, I want to work with nice people. I don't want to work with uptight jerks or stuffy people or, and so we, a lot of the times, depending on the money story that we have are putting people in a box that maybe are in the luxury market or are wealthy people or whatnot. And I have found a lot of photographers are pricing based on their money beliefs that they are going ahead and going, okay, this is too expensive or this is too cheap or all of that based on what they would buy or what they wouldn't buy. And we really need to take a step away from that. We really need to be pricing on what the value is that you're creating out in the marketplace and really what your vision of success is once again. So when you do that and you let go of that money story, a lot of what I found in Sometimes this takes a bit of work. How to be a badass with money. One, Jen Sincero, great book to read if this is speaking to you. 
then you really need to take a step back and look at it and go, money is just, once again, another form of exchange, a form of value out in the marketplace. And usually money makes people more of whatever they were. So guess what? I've had the most amazing, sweetheart, nice, super wealthy people. And yes, we've had total jerks, just awful, unkind, wealthy people too. And I'm sure when before money, they were probably those two things before they started. So it all exists out there and it's totally possible to say, I'm going to raise my prices and still work with nice people. I'm going to raise my prices and still work with grounded, funny people, whatever your vision is, but it's super important to do. Absolutely. And I feel like we've all experienced all the things. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, like my husband's told me this year, it hasn't been the first, it's not going to be the last, like things happen. And so, yeah, it's just learning to have those beliefs around it and not letting it hold you back or set you back and feel bad mm-hmm. about yourself for those things. So that's such a good point of advice for anyone, no matter what stage of business you're in. Yes. That's such a good one. So last but not least, and this is one that I just don't think it's enough airtime in our industry. And this is that once again, you are the foundation of your brand, that taking care of yourself in a holistic aspect is so important. So we have very physical jobs, for example. And so whether it's your mental health, but especially your physical health, if those things are getting put on the back burner, it's going to be really hard to continue to grow long-term and sustain the pace that a busy business requires. So once again, prioritizing your health, mental, physical, your well-being, just having the the space to make sure that you're giving your creativity, your self space so that you're not, you know, diving into burnout each season. This is so important. And, and I think this is often looks like a start, stop, continue list in terms of, hey, each year doing a debrief with yourself and going, I really need to stop editing all my jobs, or I really need to start working out five days a week, or I really need to continue to eat healthy, whatever that is for you, making those things a priority. Because if you start to suffer as a human being, your business is inevitably going to suffer as well. Yes. They, they go hand in hand, mm-hmm. like we were talking earlier. And yeah. yeah, I agree with you. It doesn't get enough airtime <laughs> for this. <laughs> we all go. It's something that we all go through, but it has not talked about as much as it probably should be. Yeah. And I think it's so easy just to be like, I am the prize, do this, make sure you're at all the big conferences or whatever that is. But there's other things too. Sometimes you might just be like, I'm actually going to take a social media break and spend time with my family or whatever that may be. So just making that a top priority because long-term the firecrackers that just go full tilt, hardcore all the time and don't ever take a moment to debrief with themselves or take space they will burn out eventually. And if you're here for the long term, if that's part of your vision, which it's always been part of mine, then you need to make this last point a priority. Totally. And like you said, a social media break is, it's almost like working out, like rest is equally and sleep and rest are equally as important as the actual yes. workout. And so it's the same thing. And Absolutely. yeah, like recognizing too, I always say, What helps me with burnout too of trying to prevent it is recognizing it and identifying it before it really comes on. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know about you, but, and it's only because I've gone through it that I know Mm -hmm. now and I can recognize, oh, this is coming on. This is a potential equation to lead up for it. So how can I like, how can I identify it, recognize it and prevent it before it happens too? Easier said than done. I almost feel like you have to go through it first to then know. (laughs) For me anyways, I did. But yeah, it's equally as important. And I think that's such a good one to end on because I also feel like a lot of people are feeling that. And again, no matter where you're at in your business, it's just something that I hear over and over. Yeah, it's just, it's, we see it. I've been around long enough to see Uh superstars come and go because of this very thing. So if it's something that you go, gosh, I'm really just totally neglecting myself, it's, it will catch up to you eventually one form or another. Gay Hendricks has a great book called The Big Leap and talks a lot about this in terms of upper limits where sometimes your body, if you have a secret desire to slow down, but you're like, no, I'm going to keep going. Your body will eventually listen and it will make you sick and slow you down on purpose. And so this has totally happened, but don't let it get to that point. If you go, hey, I need a break. Wouldn't you rather spend a week lounging by the pool than a week in bed watching movie. It's the same break, but one was you, like you said, spotting it in advance and giving it to yourself. The other one was forced because you just pushed it too far. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, even it could be worse than just a week in bed. Yes, yes. You say, like, it can be months. It can be a long time. Like you just don't know how your body's going to react to it. So yes. I think that's 
such an important thing and just a really good reminder and just wait till end on being like, this is really important to remember this. Yeah. And they're all tied together. Cause once again, that your vision of success, wow. that also is, is tied to this, that if you're totally trying to live somebody else's vision of success, it's going to manifest in ways of n- not getting along with your system because it's out, you're out of alignment with yourself. So once again, it's why we really need all five, because if you're neglecting two of these, you're still just going to be like hitting against a wall or causing that friction in your life. And ultimately we want you to be in alignment. We want you to be in flow, inspired, and really working with what feels right for you. Gosh, yes. Oh my goodness. They all go hand in hand and it makes, mm-hmm. it makes, sense all tied together and just stacked on top of each other. Like you said, it's almost like take one away and it just doesn't all fit. But yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Is there any like last piece of advice you want to leave us with? Anything that we talked about today or we didn't? Yeah, I think ultimately the biggest things are that success, the most successful people in life, they are taking massive action and massive action is digesting, but then actually doing something with it. So I feel like we're in this information age where there's so much coming at you a thousand times a day, but at the end of the day, you need to take stock and go, okay, whether that's a new habit each day or a time block, or I am going to finally raise my prices, or I am going to go shoot, whatever it looks like for you, just actually commit to something and make it happen. And that's so often the next best thing. If you finally are going to learn about business or whatever that may be, then just dive in and whatever you do, just do it with 110% enthusiasm. I think how you show up in this world, people notice the people that are all in and they notice the people that are, oh, I feel like I should be here and going through the motions. So just be that all in person as much as you can. And it's a lot easier to be all in when you're doing things that are in alignment with your vision and feel good to you. Exactly. It goes hand in hand with the first one (laughs) that you talked about. It all circles back. It all comes together. Totally. Yes. You can totally notice that. And the people that are really get really lit up about things and really excited about things usually are in alignment and it all comes full circle. They're all, all in. I love that. So fun. Oh my goodness, Katie, this was so fun. I loved this episode. And yeah, like I said, it all just ties together and all makes such perfect sense all together. But can you tell us where we can find you? Yes. So obviously on the grams at KT Mary is where you'll find all my photography at KT Mary education is where you'll find everything for photographers. If you want to nerd out on my business tips or my advice or behind the scenes there, that's great. And we have a program called the abundance plan, which is really where we teach photographers and creative entrepreneurs how to live all of this in real life and really build a business from the inside out. That's holistic and in alignment with you and soul driven. And so if that's something of interest to you, you can find out more about that on those Instagram handles too. Yay. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on today. This is such a fun episode. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. All right. Well, there you have it. I really hope that this episode was insightful for you because I loved it. I was taking notes and it's one of those things where it's really important to think about all of these things for yourself, not only hearing them, but implementing them and applying them to your own business and what makes you different. And then not only recognizing that, but then applying it to your business. So I loved this episode. I loved this conversation. I really hope you did too. Make sure if you did to screenshot it and share it to your stories and tag me at Rachel Traxler and at KT Mary so we can see which episodes you're loving the most and then also share the love in return. But thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I appreciate you so much. Keep shining and we'll see you next time.